All right. So we're going to go over the commonly um, missed ones. I'm not going to give you the direct answer, but it should be, hopefully it should be helpful for all of you. Um, guys, you should be studying every night because it is a lot of stuff. Um, I'm not going to be able to do that for you, unfortunately. Um, so make sure that you are going over your notes. I haven't been giving you homework, and that's what you should have been doing the, the whole time. If you have those prep books, it's a good way to study also. They probably have more detail in there than I actually have in my notes. All right. Your password is USA89. All right, read that first one while I set her up, please. Stimulus one. Mr. J Street, this is Thomas Jefferson talking. He's a Democratic Republican. A Democratic Republican would tend to support who? France or Britain? France. France. Um, because the Federalists, most of their support are in the Northeast. The Northeasterners usually trade with Britain. They usually support the British more than the French. Democratic Republicans are more pro-French. And during the, uh, the French Revolution, they wanted to support the French government. And they wanted to go to war with the British also because of a lot of harassment that the British were doing to us after the American Revolution. Um, the question that most people missed, they had like a 60% get this correct. Thomas Jefferson's reaction to James J. Streety, as expressed in the letter, was most directly a reflection on the ongoing debates in the United States over, I just said the answer. I'm not going to repeat myself, make sure you're paying attention. Look at the, look at the, um, answer choices. Which one of those is about this? All right, next. Which of the following was a reason the U.S. government believed it necessary to negotiate a treaty with Great Britain following the American Revolution? What did the British do to us following the American Revolution? Yes. We signed a treaty with them, and in that treaty we <laughs> said um, all British possessions, all That's British true. ports, in American territory, uh, we'll have to go away. They promised us that. After the revolution, did they follow through with their promise? No, they didn't. And they and added uh, and added um, salt to the injury. They started helping who? The natives. The Native Americans hurt us. They started harassing American <laughs> shipping. They started stealing our sailors away, impressing them. Um, and they did a lot of bad things to us. That's why in George Washington's time, when George Washington was being pressured left and right to go to war with the British again or to go to war with the French, um, George Washington remained neutral. And he decided that instead of military, he's going to try diplomacy. And that's what Jay Street is. It became so, it's so important for George Washington to settle these peacefully that he went and negotiated a treaty with the British. But in that treaty, only one thing was solved, and that is the forts in American territory, the British forts in American territory were removed. The British continued helping the natives, the British continued harassing American shipping, until in 1812, it all boils over, and what do we do? What happened in 1812? We go to, we go to war uh, with Madison, the War of 1812. Anybody have any questions? Next one. This is in stimulus part one again. This is um, after Columbus, obviously, what happened to Native American population? Decrease. Decrease, and this is mostly due because of what? Diseases. Diseases. So which of the following was the most direct effect of the changes shown in the graph? So what happened, um, the most direct effect of what happened in the graph? So what happened in the graph? Native American population decimated by old world diseases. Um, that, that, that took place during this time. So their populations dwindled to a fraction to what it once was before Columbus was here. 
I'll get your answer choices. And I know why most of you got this wrong, because you're not paying attention to the question, most direct effect. Conflicts among Native American groups uh, became more intense. European settlers were able to gain control of Native American lands. European settlers relied mainly on indentured servants and led enslaved by African Americans for labor. And trade between European settlers and Native Americans expanded. I told you this before. The fact that the, the population of the Native Americans dwindled so much led to easy conquests of Native American territory. <coughs> Next, stimulus four. This is about the Pueblo Revolt. Um, this Pueblo Indians were subjugated by the Spanish. This is in a place that we now call as New Mexico, um, where the Pueblo Indians used to live. And just like most of their, their territory, what did the Spanish impose on these Native Americans? The encomienda system. The encomienda system is a way for the Spanish to have what? Control over the Native Americans and incorporate them. They wanted to convert them into what? Okay. Christianity, Catholicism mostly, and also to have a steady source of what? Labor. 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 Because unlike the British, they didn't push them away. They incorporated them society into their society, and it's for them to have a steady source of labor. So look at the question. The conflict described in the excerpt led primarily to which of the following changes in the Spanish colonial policy. I told you this before. After the Pueblo Revolt, um, the Spaniards became a little less harsher to the Native Americans. They pulled back a little bit. And they provided more accommodations and they provided more, they guaranteed more rights to their Native American subjects. Not, they're not going to be as equal to the white Spanish that were living here but they gave them more rights. They accommodated them more. Read the question. Read the multiple choice. And make sure you know how to answer this next time. Next. English colonization patterns in North America differed most from Spanish colonization in that the English... I don't know why a lot of you are getting this wrong. Only one of these described English colonization. Were they relatively peaceful with the Native Americans? No. They were not. They would always go to war with them, push them away. If they're stealing their land, they're not going to just take it easy on you. Um, look at this one. Adapted some Native American um, views on the roles of women. Did the English do that? No. Native Americans were more willing to give uh, women rights. English settlers were not like that. Women were second-class citizens up to uh, up to the 1900s when we became a country. Relied more on coerced labor for from Native Americans. Did the English do that? Did we? Did the English use Native American labor? No. Why? Because they traveled out to the in the north, they went over here by, with their families, so they used their family as a source of labor. In the south, what did they mainly use? Slaves. Slaves before slaves? Interior servants. Who did that? Who used Native American for labor? Spanish. The Spanish. In their what system? In the encomienda system. That makes sense? Yes. All right. Immigration by the decade. We all know who was immigrating in the United States in the 1800s, mostly. Irish. Irish and the Germans. I don't know why you guys got this one wrong. What is the result? What was one of the main results of immigration in the United States? Number one, we became more culturally what? Diverse. Diverse. Number two, there were a lot of people that didn't want these immigrants, just like today with, with Mexican immigrants. There were a lot of people in the United States that resisted immigration. They were afraid of what it would do to our culture, what it would do to our religion. Um, there was a stereotype of Irish and German immigrants being drunkards and alcoholics. Um, so what movement came about in the United States? Natives. Natives. Which is ironic because everybody that were... were that were in the United States, besides Native Americans, were immigrants. Their ancestors were immigrants for the most part. And which the nativists form a political party that competed in elections. What are they called? I know nothing. 
Alright, next one is Bartolome de la Casas. When you see de la Casas name, remember the debate that happened in front of the king and queen of Spain about the treatment of who? Native. Of Native Americans in the Spanish colonies under which system? Okay. Under the encomienda system. In the colonization of the Americas, the Spanish used the encomienda system. Look at the answer choices. Hopefully, by now, you should know the actual answer to that question. Anyone, any, anyone have any questions so far? Mm. Moving on. This is about the market revolution. On this next question right here, I want you to focus on um, the word families right there. When you see this question, focus on the word families and think about what the market revolution, the industrial revolution, the transportation revolution did to the family dynamics here in the United States. That traditional mold of husband and wife and children, that's all changed because of the market revolution, because of the opportunity given to women to earn more money, the dynamics of the household also changed. Bunch of, a bunch of you missed a lot of this. Number, which, are, which are the following pieces of historical evidence? Well, a lot of you missed this one. When we're talking about primary sources, um, which of the following pieces of it, historical evidence from the, uh, from the United States Census could best be used to support the argument in the excerpt? So what's the argument in the excerpt? Market revolution changed what? Um, families. They changed family dynamics. They changed the roles of husband and wife um, in the family. So which of these pieces of evidence can lead you, can get you information about that? So data showing changes in cotton and production prices. Yeah. Wait, I'm sorry, I think this is the wrong stimulus. Yeah. Yeah, that's the wrong stimulus. Um, is that the wrong stimulus? No, um, no, 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 no. Is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Market revolution, industrial revolution. Which one of these is related to the industrial revolution? That's up to you. All right, next. Which of the following historical developments most contributed to the market revolution? I told you before, market revolution is fueled by two things. What is it fueled by? How come we got the market revolution here in the United States? Because at the same time, what's going on? Improvements in technology. What do we call that? Uh, industrial revolution. And improvements in transportation. What do we call that? Transportation, transportation revolution. We wouldn't have been able to get the market revolution, which is a global market, a national market, with people buying and selling from everywhere, and us mass, produc uh, mass producing without both of these, industrial revolution and the transportation revolution. Stimulus nine. This is in part two, I believe. Slavery, this is about slavery. It's about how slavery has been constantly evolving in the United States, been changing in the United States. So again, primary sources. Which of the following primary source would most likely support Berlin's argument in the excerpt. The argument is that the dynamics between master and slave has constantly been evolving here so ever since colonial times up to the Civil War. Slavery has been changing. The relationship between master and slave has been changing. And they're asking you which one of these pieces of evidence can support that. The excerpt is not talking about whether or not slavery is increasing or decreasing over time. It's talking about relationships between master and slave. There's only one piece of evidence here that's useful in seeing that and looking through that. Okay. I'm going to tell you right now, this is not the answer. 
not the answer. So you have three other choices. Look at them and see which one would be the most useful in determining the relationship between master and slave. Probably if you did that. No, I'm not going to say the answer. All right, moving on. Okay, the answer. A bunch of you are missed this question also. So the thing that you need to realize here is before the revolution, in the governments in the colonies, most of the people that are getting elected or are being part of these governments and these colonial governments were what? A lot of them, what mattered a lot? Money mattered a lot. Wealth mattered a lot. Rich people usually controlled the governments back then. But then after the revolution, things change. Money is less important. People who were not rich, people who don't own a lot of property, are now getting more elected. Which one is that more evident in, the northern states or the southern states? The northern states. Look. A lot of people who do not own a lot of property getting elected into office. A lot of non-wealthy people getting elected into office. It's also evident in the South, but not as much. For the most part, the ultra-rich still control the South. But it's better than what it was during the Revolution. Or before the Revolution, I'm sorry. So, look at your answer choices. The graph most strongly supports which of the following arguments? following factors would most directly contribute to the change between the two periods shown in the map. This one's easy. After the American Revolution, a lot of the states decided to democratize the United States even more, allow more people to vote. So I told you before, what allowed somebody like Andrew Jackson, who's not, who wasn't from the elite, he wasn't a wealthy planter growing up, he was a poor guy growing up, to become elected into office in 1828? What happened to the proper requirements in the states? Well, gradually, they were all going away. Ever since the American Revolution, state after state are getting rid of their property requirements that by the time 1828 happened, somebody like Jackson was able to get elected president. That would have never happened before. Look at all the presidents that we had before Jackson. All of them wealthy, all of them elite planters, all of them from the aristocracy of the United States. But in 1828, Jackson got elected into office because one by one, states were getting rid of their property requirements. But only for who, though? This democratization of the United States only affected who? White men. Not who? Not women, not minorities, not slaves, not black people who are free in the United States. Only white men. Look at the answer choices. Uh, which of the following statements best explains the change over time in the composition of the legislature? <laughs> Some of them don't make it. You shouldn't choose them. Look at the first hand. I'm going to give you two that are not it. Don't touch your pens, because I don't want you writing anything. Else. Look at this one. Factory jobs provide workers with increased free time that some use to participate in politics. We know that in the beginnings of the United States, during the Industrial Revolution, how are factory conditions like? They were very bad. And did they work long or short hours? Long. They worked very long. If, if All right, next. Is this about women at all? No. It's not about, about women, so get rid of that. All right, next. This one is surprising. I don't know why you guys got this one wrong. Ralph Waldo Emerson, transcendentalist during the um, age of reform in the United States, where you have all these reform movements popping up. Transcendentalist is about culture, it's about music, it's about literature, it's about books, it's about the arts. And he's encouraging the American people to stop copying who? Europe. Stop copying Europe. 
We have listened too long to the courtly muses of Europe, to the British, to the French. We have to make our own path. We have to make our own identity. We have to create our own culture here in the United States. That's all I'm going to do. All right. This is Stimulus 13. I think we're still in part two. This is talking about the contributions of women during what? The Revolutionary War, the American Revolution. What did women do? They make clothes, they produce goods so that we don't have to be dependent on other countries, so that we can fight a proper war. They helped out with the soldiers. Mostly they didn't fight. There were some exceptions, but for the most part they were contributing. Again, it's about sources. So which of the following pieces of evidence could best support the argument in the exit? The argument is women contributed to, they had a big role to play in the American Revolution. Even though they weren't there fighting like the men, they had a big role to play. So which one of these can give you an insight about the role women played during the American Revolution? Does anybody not understand a word here that might lead you to the wrong answer? Let me know now if you don't know what something is. Yes, sir? A word. I can define a word for you. I can't give you an answer. Correspondence. Correspondence is exchanging of letters. So they do this a lot in the olden times because email and texting wasn't a thing. So they would exchange, uh, they would mail each other. What else? Statistics? So data showing the, the size of the family before and after the revolution. Again, you're thinking of what is useful to the argument. What's land titles? Like deeds or land? Titles for land? Oh. I think that's what I'm Sorry? You need to ask yourself, is that going to be useful to the argument that women were doing something during the American Revolution? Which one of these would show you that women might have been doing something during the American Revolution? Oh, it's correspondence. Like Literacy rates is the amount of people that can read and write. What was correspondence? Exchanging of letters. Moving on. Part 3, Stimulus 17. We have yet no proof. This is the corn thing. And this is just a matter of you guys not listening. Is he talking good or bad about corn? Yeah. It's not bad about corn. Right? Even though corn is a very good source of so nutrients, and most Europeans are going to adopt corn as part of their diet after the Colombian exchange, um, you need to know is why, why would he say such things like that? What would motivate somebody from Europe to say, you know what, this thing that Native Americans plant, it's not that good compared to what we have here in Europe, compared to what the European diet is, this thing that Native Americans eat are only are better for pigs than they are for men. That, that language right there should give you an insight. This corn <coughs> is better for the swine than for men. Such a, it's such a strong wording in that, that implies something. So look at your thing. Alright, moving on. Simulus 18, it's about Metacom's war, King Philip's war. Um, this happened in New England. And whenever there's conflict between British colonists and Native Americans, it's usually about what? Yeah. Because the British would push them away from their homelands and they would try to take over. Only one of those is about land. All right. This next one. Look at the date, 1774. This is before we went all out and we went to a point of no return and declared independence, 1776. This is at a time where most of the leaders of the United States were still not willing to go that far. They were still hoping for reconciliation. They were still hoping 
for mother country and the 13 colonies to meet in the middle. But what's the main problem that we had? We had no what? We had no representation in Parliament. They were taxing us without giving us a representative there in Parliament, without giving us a voice in Parliament. That was the main thing. And this is a proposal in the First Continental Congress to the king to, you know what, we want our own government here so that we're represented, but we're going to give you some power also. You're going to choose the president of this government but we're gonna choose the people that would participate in it. So you're gonna have some power, the colonies are gonna have some power, we're gonna have some representation, everything's gonna be okay. Look at the answer choices. Excerpt contributed mostly to which of the following? So the excerpt, what's this excerpt about? Great Parent of the Universe. Oh, this is about in Massachusetts, they're proposing to free a what? Slaves. This is right after what? Look at the date. De uh, the Declaration of Independence. So you should probably know that this, this the language here is probably going to be inspired by what? Declaration of Independence. Which was that one? Which one of these is the one that makes the most sense? This is about freeing slaves, guys. There's a distinction between making slaves equal and making slaves free. This is about freeing slaves. Just like um, Abraham Lincoln in the quiz that you're going to take today, Abraham Lincoln never proposed that whites and blacks are equal to each other. He just thinks that blacks should be what? Should be free. Which of the following most likely helped prompt the petition in the excerpt? Should be obvious by now. Look at the answer choices, it should be obvious. Anybody have any question on the stimulus five that you're going to take right now? All right, I'm going to upload it. Don't start going up. I'm going to start um, logging in. Do not do the one from yesterday. It's going to be a different way. time today, you may do the other ones. You may do the other ones that you might want to requiz on. I'm only going to accept requises until tomorrow morning, Thursday. So I'll be here after school today. I'll be here in the morning tomorrow on Thursday if you want to requiz and improve your grades a little bit. What if you passed? You can get a better grade if you want to. I'll raise up to you. This. Do I take it today or? Up to you. You can always requiz, right? So if you want to take it right now, and then if you don't like it, great. Sorry? Sure.
Yeah, guys, go ahead and change your numbering. It starts with 24, and I think it ends with 37. So change it on your on your stimulus for me, please. I apologize for that. Starts with 24, ends with 37. If there's something that doesn't match up, let me know, please. From yesterday, yeah. So wait, but change so the numbering because it starts with 24 now and ends in 37. So change the numbering of the symbol. Oh, okay, okay, okay. If you're confused, guys, just let me know. Oh, okay. 24 and it ends on 37. Yeah. Okay.